the Joe Rogan experience. It's interesting, too, that you're bringing this up, that it's growing on something else. And that, that seems to be part of nature, right? This sort of symbiotic relationship that some of these mushrooms have with the plants and the, 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 the environment around them. That's a really, really good uh, point um, because um, the mycelium will be found with the bees. When we grew the mycelium on rice compared to on birch wood, the, the, the mycelium grown on rice reduced the viruses you know, 10 plus, 10 to 1. The mycelium we grew it on birch reduced the viruses up to a thousand to one. Oh, so that's so, its natural environment. So that 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 speaks to the fact that, that um, mm. there there appears to be something that's coding within the ecosystem that then excites the mycelium to produce something that is more strongly result in an antiviral activity. That's the case with cordyceps as well, right? Cordyceps mushrooms uh, grow on other things. Yeah, but the cordyceps mushrooms, when they grow on the worms, this is something that was a big subject of debate Kiss because Kiss. because cordyceps sinensis is a um, it's um, it's it's a a uh, a mushroom that grows on a worm, basically on like a, a little on caterpillar a, on a caterpillar lar larvae in, in the in, in the Himalayas elsewhere in China in the Far East. And people were finding these cordyceps mushrooms and they were cloning them. And then they got the culture going and then they analyzed the culture and they got what's called an anamorph. It's not that complicated. It's just two faces of the same coin. There's a mushroom fruit body and then there's this imperfect form that is a different looking organism, but they're actually the same. They have two different expressions. When they all the scientific literature kept on coming up with different anamorphs. And so they all had all this competition in the scientific literature. What is the true anamorph of Cordyceps sinensis? Well, now it's called Ophiocordyceps sinensis. They redefined it. It's called Sensu Stricto. And when they analyzed the, the mushrooms, not until recently they discovered that another fung a group of fungi are chasing the Cordyceps sinensis as the fruit body develops. Other fungi are chasing right behind the other fungus. So you have multiple fungi that are actually present in the cordyceps worm. It's not just one species. It's multiple species that are, are co-occurring, chasing each other in the, inside the, the cordyceps mushroom as its fruits. So again, it just speaks to the, the complexity of nature. Wow. So, so what, where should you get your cordyceps source and for, for health benefits? You know, um, that's a really good question. Cordyceps militaris does not have these issues that cordyceps sinensis does. The problem is cordyceps sinensis, thousands of articles have been published, really which one they're talking about. It's like it's all mixed up now. What is what a true anamorph were these scientists using? Mm. Uh, there are ones called Pisciliomyces. You know, um, there's other other ones that her, 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 Hirsutella sinensis is now thought to be the true anamorph for Cordyceps sinensis. Well, what all this lingo means is basically there's a mushroom with a whole bunch of other fungi that are associated with it, and when they cultured these other fungi, they did clinical studies or research studies, and they came up with results. The problem is that they've mixed it up into four or five different species, and you can't sort of um, de uh, disambiguate the data now because right. it's too complicated. So it's a really good question. The Cordyceps militaris does not have these issues. And so I would steer people to Cordyceps militaris right now because the Cordyceps sinensis, the Ophio Cordyceps sinensis issues uh, are still complicated. And now virtually thousands of research articles are an all now suspect because no one has a foggiest idea what anamorph they were using. Oh, wow. So it, it, it speaks to the complexity uh, of the system. So, And how many people are actually working on this data too? Oh, thousands of researchers. And, and I'm thankful that the Chinese mycologists sort of uh, were the ones who finally sorted this out. Mm. There was a lot of conflict academically. There's a lot of big egos in academia. Mm. People get wedded to their own research. You know, we're all like that. And, um, and the challenges went back and forth. And f fortunately, a group of Chinese uh, scientists finally were able to, to narrow down the argument to understand that everyone was actually doing good culture work. They were actually expert mycologists taking the right tissue, taking it from the right cordyceps mushroom. It's just that at that time, they had a different fungus that was naturally part 
of the inside of the mushroom mm. that was a mixture of fungi that were racing at different paces up the mushroom. Well, the Chinese were the first to use it for a performance benefit, right? Or they were the first to at least be publicized to use it in the Olympics. They were using cordyceps mushrooms. That was one of the reasons why at on it we developed Shroom Tech Sport, mm -hmm. which is a cordyceps mushroom-based supplement, which... I love cordyceps for workouts, for pre-workout. It's like it gives you an extra gear. It's really mm -hmm. kind of crazy how effective it is, especially in combination with B12 and uh, other adaptogens. It just has – it's a great pre-workout supplement because it doesn't get you jittery at all. It's not a stimulant. But you have like a little more juice when you exercise. And that's one of the things that those high-altitude herding populations right. have found, right? That's exactly right. It's likely to be a vasodilator, uh, and it has steroidal-like uh, benefits as well. Uh, so, yeah, the, the cordyceps for, for athletes has been tried and true, and many of these anamorphs that I mentioned – have those properties so for athletes like what dose would you recommend like what if you're well gonna exercise? I, I i'm not a medical doctor so when people ask me recommendations i know that the common usage of these is in the order of uh, two grams you know uh there are usually 500 millimeter uh, uh milligram capsules there's lots of good companies that are producing this you know um i would just make sure it's my mycelial based and it's not fruit body based. Uh, the the clear evidence is showing the the, the how would one find out whether something's mycelial based? It should versus declare fruit it. We say mushroom mycelium on on all of our la labels. So, so it, and if you were going to take that, like if you weren't going to take sh shroom tech sport, if you wanted to make your own concoction, you would recommend two grams, and then and make sure uh, you know the chain of custody of where it came from, mm -hmm. because a lot of these companies buy on the spot market. If what they company is this that you, you, you gave that's, me? That's Host Defense. Host Defense. Is this yeah. yours? Is yep. this your company? Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll support you. Host Defense, and there's there a website where someone can grab this? Yeah, fungi.com or host, hostdefense.com. And do you sell uh, cordyceps as well? Yes, we do. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. Yeah, so. And um, do you take this stuff before you exercise? Do you take Absolutely. cordyceps? Yeah, I take cordyceps. I take lion's mane and a seven species blend in particular. Seven species yeah, blend. What's in that stuff? It's Stamet 7. It's got, uh, it's got chaga. It's got reishi. It has a garakon. It's got a, a birch polypore called, mm. uh, called Pitoporus betulinus. Um, and um, so it has maitake in it. And these are this is a seven species blend. But the the evidence for physicians and people who want to look at peer-reviewed articles, the single species um, have the most elaborated and convincing evidence when you start compounding these. So what we're doing, we have five or six full-time researchers, several PhDs in our staff. We are, again, trying to disambiguate the complexity of all these benefits by looking at one species at a time. So we're doing this methodically, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally a year now. I have 110 employees, um, and I created my company in order to do research. Um, I have no partners. Um, so I can now dedicate the resources to be able to do novel research. And we love going up against conventional wisdom because you have to challenge conventional wisdom to see if it indeed meets the muster. <laughs>